Well, Gemini, welcome to a game-changing, a radical shift energy in the month of April of 2024. In your case, it's particularly important because the Lord of your sign, Mercury, is doing something he hasn't done since 2017, not to mention an eclipse that's happening in Aries, oh, total solar, and a 1941 rare event with Jupiter and Neptune. We're going to dive into this critical and game-changing month ahead. Let's get down to it now. But before we begin, my name is Lori Lothian. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac and Whole Sign Houses, and I am in love with fixed stars and minor asteroids. You get a lot of that stuff on my channel, 40 videos plus a month. If you're new to my channel, check it out by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you never miss anything I put out there. And basically, I'm only sharing one thing with you. In the month of April, I'm doing my Sky Reader class midway through April. We start six weeks. Be your own astrologer. Time Your Best Life. We have a weekly live class replay available, forever access to the content if you can't make it, a weekly Q&A that we change time zones so we move it around. Every week we have one live Q&A, plus we have a Facebook group to put your homework in where me and my assistant will be looking over your work and trying to give you a high-touch learning environment. So if you want to be your own astrologer and time your best life, consider jumping aboard. There's a link in my description box under the more button that lets you know how to sign up for the wait list so that when the tuition cart opens in early April, you will know about it and get an early bird discount. Hey, so let's get going. Let's start with Mercury because he's the Lord of your sign and he's doing something in Aries he has not done since 19, 2017, spending two months there in an elemental earth year in which he spends two months this year in Leo and Sag as well. So this is a fire energy that he's activating for you, which activates a very important, important part of your sky. It act activates your 11th house energies, your <laughs> third house energies, which are amazing, and your seventh, which are all the relational houses in your sky. In essence, you're going to be very in relationship to self, to one-on-one, -on -one, and to you're going to be in relationship to one on one self and others a lot this year in a very bold, brave, and initiatory way. During the month of April, Mercury will retrograde, but he has been in the sign of Aries, which is your house of good spirit to do with career gains, to do with things to do with groups of belonging and friends and your long range plans and goals and your karmic rewards. He has been in that part of your sky already, Gemini, since back on March the 10th, and he doesn't leave there until May the 15th. The big news story for April is his retrogradation. He's going to backpedal like the moonwalk backwards in your sky and the date of the backpedaling in your Aries house that I just described to you is the 1st of April, April Fools, to the 25th. I'm doing a webinar on that. You might want to get in on that link below. You'll learn more about that if you keep listening when I get to the Kazemi story. Now, this retrogradation is between 27 and 16 degrees of the sign of Aries. And so for you, with this being the Lord of your sky, anybody born between 13 and 29 degrees, um, anyone with a sun or moon <laughs> or rising between 13 and 29 degrees of Aries will really feel this retrograde. Now, remember, your rising sign is going to always be most accurate, but you can listen for your sun as an indicator of career and purpose and the moon as home, body, and safety needs, for example. So I want you to consider that the April 1st to the 30th, you're likely to hear from a lot of friends you haven't heard from for frigging ever. Out of the woodwork come these people uh, emails, phone calls, text messages from old friends, groups of belonging and allies. Like, uh, you know, if you used to belong to a club of some kind or a group of belonging as well, you'll hear back from these people. Suddenly they'll be all over you. You may also redefine some of your long range plans and goals while he's retrograde. And you might also deeply reconsider matters to do with career gains and how you wish to create earnings and success in your career story. Now, what we also want to note is how Mars is really loving you up in that 10th house. He's been moving through that 10th house now for a long time, since mid-March, and it's he's still going through your career space and reputation, 10th house, high noon, till April 30th. Now, he loves you up if you're passionate, hardworking, deeply engaged, and committed to what you're doing. I have a son in Gemini, and I can feel that I have been driving 
and forward energy ever since he got there. But if you are somebody who's tired of the work you're doing, you don't like that career path, you're, the job isn't right for you, Mars can help you leave it. This is a very pair away, quit and end energy. You might get rid of stuff you don't want. And there's some exciting things that Mars will be doing this month that are in alignment with should I stay or should I go or what do I want to keep in my work? So like, let's get to that shortly. Finally, we have as well Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and kindness and peace. And she's moving as a planetary body on April the 5th into Aries. Now she has been for the three weeks before April the 5th, trundling along in your 10th house, giving you a lot of popular appeal and making you look good. And everyone thinks you're fantastic. And you feel really happy with the rewards of your career and you're sociable in the workspace and all of that stuff. That's been going on, right? But now it's coming on April 5th to a bit of a close here. And she steps in, in a tomboy place for her, a little Xena warrior into your Aries, 11th house of good spirit. And that's where she's teaming up there with that Mercury. And quite possibly how you experience this energy is that you find yourself in a more social mode where it is important for you to spend time engaging with friendships and groups of belonging and not letting that part of your life languish. I find that when Venus is in the 11th house, her favorite thing is to hang out with the friends and do fun things. So even if you think that being a recluse is your MO and you're pretty sure that there's no way you're going to be more social, trust me, you will be. Now also, because she likes to enjoy life and pleasures. She's a little more high spirited, more adventurous here. And it's really possible that the way this can play out for you is you begin to engage in more risk-taking, initiative, daring in your social life. You might go off and say, I've never thought I'd ever go to, I don't know, I don't know, anything weird socially. And you'll say, well, I'll give that a try. I'll be a more of a social adventurer. So you're being more of a social adventurer, daring and pioneering, trying new things, April the 5th to the 29th. Now let's break down the sky in the chronological order. That's going to be extremely important. We've got so much going on. Please get a pen and paper. I mean, for me to hire a video editor to put the, the dates up beside me, it's going to be a lot of hassle and money. So why don't you just take a pen and paper and write these times down or listen to this video again. How's that? That's just a thought. I had some suggestions lately. And I'm like, guys, you know, it's not that hard to write the dates down. So April the 3rd, Venus comes together with Neptune in a dreamy love up. And that is while she's still exalting you in your Pisces 10th house of career. This can be a dream come true in your career, a special precious goal realized in a magical way, but it also can be you being seen by the world as somebody providing spiritual, um, creative, and beautiful something into the workplace or into the world. It's very soulmate -y, just so you know. So maybe some of you could fall in love with a person in the workspace and it's very soulmate love at first sight, possibly. Again, April the 3rd. On April the 6th and 7th, Venus will sextile Pluto. Pluto is about power and he's in your ninth house and your ninth house is about your deepest dharmic path, your wishes and goals that are aligned with God's divine will. It's a house of, called the house of God. Sometimes it's where you go, am I on my true north? Anyone who's got a Gemini sun, moon, or rising is probably asking that question. Don't forget, sun is purpose and career, moon, home, and mother and body. And you know, sun can be father, father figures. But the rising sign is everything about you. Now, with Venus in now in Aries, sextiling Pluto, this is something to do with a powerful changing or positive shift regarding a friendship or be group belonging connected to the words academics, book publishing, like be great for a book publishing contract, uh, foreign shores, foreigners, and foreign lands. Keep your eye on the ball for something sweet happening here that's very powerful, but very positive, April the 6th to the 7th. On April the 9th and the 10th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, this is one of those really hot spots for everybody. On the 8th, the eclipse is happening in, in the sign of Aries. It is a total solar eclipse, very powerful. It'll unfold over a year. It's one of three eclipses in Aries, one last April, one next March. This one is happening at 19 degrees of Aries. If you're a Gemini sun, moon, and rising between 
Oh, I would say uh, 15 to 24 degrees of Gemini. It's very, very intense for you. You really feel it. But in a positive way, this North Node eclipse in Aries on the 8th, that 19 degrees flows to you. It opens up a portal of new beginnings and new directions in the area of your larger groups of belonging and your great gains from your career. You will see that unfold over the course of the next year. Also, you may dramatically shift change your energy and choices around what you want to accomplish in your career and reputation stuff. This is where you kind of have the wishes and dreams for you in life. And these are expanding North Node and changing eclipses. After that, on the 9th and 10th, but really mesh within it, is Mars hitting the wall of Saturn, hard stop or you know frustration. And now Mars is moving at this time on the 9th and 10th in that 10th house. That's a house of your reputation and career. And Saturn is like, literally a brick wall. So if you've been driving and really pushing, then around this time, the eclipse, you might come to a really either a lot of frustration in that career space. You might want to quit a job, put your hands up, push against a wall, scream into a box or quit. Who knows? But it's a very frustration, intense gas pedal break the two don't match energy for you. And that's coming in with great intensity into that part of your sky that represents that career and reputation. So take a few deep breaths on the 9th and 10th, give or take a few days on either side. It may feel like pure and sheer frustration. This too shall pass. As we move into the month, we get to April 11th and 12th, and Mercury enters into the heart of the sun in a Kazemi. Because Mercury is the lord of your sign, this is incredibly important for you because this is where you are going to experience a deep divine download and reset around your gains, long-range plans for your, your, your life, things to do with you know friendships and groups of belonging and elder sibling, all meanings of your 11th. I'm doing a Mercury webinar, a retrograde webinar for free. You might want to sign up for it. It's in the description box below. I'll be talking about the stars and the fixed uh, minor stars, fixed stars and minor asteroids involved in this. We do a guided meditation as well as a little mini lecture slideshow that help you understand what's happening in the sky. All right, so check that out below. But it's hard to say what it'll be for you because it's happening in the house of other people. But it can be a deep magical window for uh, an insight or download about a longer range goal or plan. But if it's not a personal thing, then it can be something to do that's quite magical by hearing from He's retrograde, right? He's magical. News from a friend or group of belonging that you used to be a part of and an invitation from that friend or group coming through around that Kazemi. Again, the date was the 11th and 12th, depending on your time zone and where you live in the world. Now we come into a pocket of sky that I can only describe as a vortex, and that's April the 18th to the 21st. There is so much going on so much going on. It's insane. Okay. I'm going to say it's, it's crazy. It makes me crazy to think about it. So the first thing I want you to know is that the big story is April the 21st, we'll have Jupiter Uranus in conjunction in Taurus. We haven't seen that since way back in 1941 in Taurus and it's back again. This energy of this conjunction is felt as early as April 15th, building up and waning by the 26th. So you're feeling it in that window of time. Innovation, excitement, sudden changes, unexpected things, Jupiter, bounty, prosperity, electric shock current in your 12th house of foreign countries, foreigners, foreign lands, and revenue generated from those places, as well as addictions and self-undoing. Some big shifts here, and these will fold out over 14 years, not just the day of the or the month of this event. This is a new synodic cycle between Jupiter and Uranus. I'll be doing a separate video on this, but I've already done this, and it's in my 2024 Big Transits playlist. Please watch that video for the deeper dive. But what's going on before and around that is also intense. Technically speaking, Mars is supporting Jupiter, cheering him on. Go, go, Jupiter. Because Mars is saying, okay, Jupiter, from the Pisces waters of the career space, I'm, I'm giving you all of my love and support to change 12th house matters in a flowing way. Well, Mars is change. Mars is decisions and actions. And what decisions, changes, and actions you're making in your career vis-a-vis -vis Mars supports the Jupiter-Uranus electric energy in this 12th house. 
If you make money from foreign shores and foreign lands, international borderless income, it's definitely about that. This is like a boom energy here where you're going to find some major financial shifts coming through your sky in the 14 years that follow. If it's about an addiction, same deal. You may find that you're going to kick that addiction to the curb so that you can be more focused on your career. And finally, some of you may Mars move, change your career in relationship to country and where you live as a result of this over the 14 years that follow. But nonetheless, in the acute window, this Mars sextile Jupiter is happening most most uh, evidently, you'll feel it like the 17th and 18th of the month of April, and it moves toward, flows toward that Jupiter uh, and gets more exact as we move to the 21st. Don't forget, don't forget that Mars hit a hard wall way back when. Like, don't expect this to be an easy career month. He went slamming into a wall on the 9th and 10th, but now he's giving a cheer to Lord Jupiter and Uranus from Pisces, which is Jupiter's house. So he wants to please Jupiter. And it's all about a, a change in career direction, momentum, and reputation as well, and things to do with those 12th house stories. Something like a, like a sudden unexpected opportunity from a foreign place or foreign person can impact your career successfully. Evidence of that coming April 18th to the 21st. And during the 18th to the 21st as well, Mercury will come into a, a um, conjunction with Venus. Now this is an Aries. She's now moved into Aries. Mercury's retrograding still. Uh, women from the past coming through. Uh, women from the past uh, acting as benefactors and allies, ideas from the past that are very profitable reoccurring to you as something you wish to, co to continue doing to support greater career gains are possibilities for that conjunction. Again, April 18th to the 21st. If it doesn't get busy enough, still April 2021st or so, the sun is squaring Pluto. Ay, ay, ay. Pluto is up in your ninth house of God, where you're looking for deep, profound meaning and true north in your life. And you really, if you're in the academic world, book publishing world, third marriage world, this is where Pluto's sitting, courts and legal matters. And Pluto gets a, a, a difficult stink eye from the sun. Now, the sun will be moving through Taurus, your long distance foreign land, revenue and travels, as well as yourself and doing and addictions. Because Pluto's in a house of foreign travels and the sun is squaring Pluto. Look for some intensity around the things that may have to do with foreign land journeys and travel really being in your face April 18th to the 21st, basically. Jupiter is with the sun and he brings kind of a bonification and a bounty and a goodness to whatever this is. But like, just know that there may be a critical turning point here. And you'll see that energy that I'm talking about, you know, April, 2021, picking up later. And I'll jump ahead, picking up later to April 28th, the 30th, when Venus then squares Pluto and follows through on what was happening. Venus will have moved into her home sign of Taurus. Remember, she's only in Aries till the 29th. So now Venus in your 12th house, Jupiter in your 12th house, Uranus in your 12th house, right? Sun in your 12th house, Pisces. And Venus goes in and she follows up on what the sun started. I would expect you to connect a dot here very simply and very easily about maybe a, a foreign travel opportunity and some tension here or some major decisions being made. And again, the dates of the first tension is April 2021 with Venus mopping it up in finding a solution, perhaps April 28th to the 30th. There is a full moon on the 23rd of April at four degrees or so of Scorpio. You want to go back to the fall when we had a new moon there six months earlier, but there is a completion and ending or a fulfillment of something in your sixth house of work, tenancies and rental agreements, pets. Okay, these are six house meanings as well as debts, money and otherwise karmic and real. So you're coming to complete or fulfill something that was planted last fall, six months earlier. And that fulfillment will be unfolding over six months from the moon that happens on the 23rd, the full Scorpio moon in your sixth house. The last thing I want to mention is a spiritual warrior energy and alchemical magic afoot as a god of actions and decisions bumps into Neptune and they combine their forces in your career space. Now, actions, choices, and decisions, Mars, endings is, if necessary, Neptune, fantastical, dreamy, and true. I mean, these two together are good. You could say, you know, in a way though, that Mars can be 
a little bit like the sobering moment, right? Because he he will cut the fog of Neptune, and you may come around April twenty eighth to twenty twenty. 30th, April 20th to 30th, 30th, and it kind of come to Jesus moment, you know, a very clear revelation or understanding of what you need to end or sever as the fog of confusion can clear in something to do with your career and reputation directions. And now you sort of see the way forward without any ob obfuscation or fog or, you know, tinted rose color glasses. It may be disillusioning, but it will be clarifying. So look for April 28th or 30th to give you something on that uh, energetically. Now we're going to move into um, one more thing I want to mention, uh, which is to finish up the video actually, is to say, don't forget that I am recording this for you guys on March the 20th. And if you were on my Patreon community, you'd be getting this today. Uh, they get everything early access ad free, well ahead of the curve. And if you like that for five bucks a month minimum uh, tier, come join us. And if you join for all new members, I have a, a special right now and you can get the Sinistry, Are You My Person Relationship course and the Chiron Key to Purpose course that I've already taught, but the replays valued at $66 in total are being gifted to you for free uh, for trying me out. And if you want to leave after trying me for a month, you can take the gifts with you. They are going to be uh, access that you'll have, and I can't re 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 revoke it, you'll have access to those courses. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening. And I'm hoping all you Geminis, I have a progressed Gemini son, have an amazing experience in the month of April. Holy moly, I could say April is one of the months that we'll never forget individually and collectively. Thanks, guys.